As you can see, this school is very different than anything you've probably ever experienced. There are no internal walls, only two small classrooms, and lots of open area that encourage collaboration. But you may be wondering, how do students get anything done if there's all this noise, especially if this is full with all of this technology? That is where student goal setting and student reflections come into play, my friend. In my classroom, I like to model for my students how they can pick apart all of the assignments that they have to do, identify what has to be done first, and set that goal. So that though that things are crazy, they're working on projects, they're collaborating with other students in different classrooms, different teachers are coming in out all the time. They know I need to finish X by Y. And because of that, at the end of the week, I let the students come back to me and say, did you finish your goals? Did you get what you wanted to do done? And if they say no, we talk about, were your goals too ambitious? Were they realistic? And if they, did you, were you distracted? And if they did reach their goals, we say, okay, what else can you do to improve yourself? Each year, all my students have a data binder. Um, we keep track of their data in many different ways. We track our benchmark assessments. We also have reading and math goals. We have uh, social, emotional, and behavior goals. And we might revisit these goals depending upon the data. It might be weekly, it might be bi-weekly, it might be monthly. The reflection of their behavior and their growth is key to motivating students to do more and be better. And I think that when I have really taken the time to help the students reflect on their learning, there's a better buy-in, they're more motivated to excel and achieve in the class. And you know, I think anybody loves to see themselves improving and be able to see it on a piece of paper or talk about it with someone, it's always encouraging. In my social studies classroom, what my students do is at the end of every unit, um, they complete a reflection guide for how they thought the assignments went for the first unit, and then they're going to also complete an encompassing goal setting assignment for the next unit, which is going to discuss all the improvements that they would like to make from the first unit. So the improvements may be from their writing, their preparation, anything that may come up from the first unit that they feel like they can do better. And what that provides the students is a baseline for them to show growth. And I don't care if that growth is from D work to A work, that's not always the case. Sometimes the the growth is from D work to a C work. And for that particular student, that growth is amazing and it's awesome. And it's just getting the students to, to show any sort of growth from unit to unit and providing them with that positive experience. And one of the things that we do here at PL Prep is we have four pillars of success. So at the beginning of each week, we all choose a pillar to work on and we set a commitment. We have these reflection journals. This is one of my students' journals and her commitment was to be empowered. So they draw a quick sketch, they write a simple sentence and then we place our picture on the pillar and the action that we're working on. And this, uh, we pull this up in every morning meeting when we are setting our commitments. We do this daily to remind ourselves of what we promised to show and we use these commitment jars. So I would state my commitment, I put a popcorn kernel inside and at the end of each day during closing circle, we breathe, we take a minute to remember our actions throughout the day and we would either put that kernel into the yes jar or into the oops jar if we didn't show it and we want to try again tomorrow. Um, during the week, I have one-on-one -on -one conferences with them to talk about what the commitment that they wrote in the journal, what's something that they're doing really well, what's something that they need to work on or even help on. And at the end of the week, on Fridays, they use the levels of understanding from one to four to show us what level they're on, what was something they did really well and what is something that they still need to work on. And in their data folders, they have this template and they will color in their level of understanding for their pillar that they were working on. And they have another column for a friend to um, also evaluate them from what they noticed so that they have a buddy, an, an accountable buddy. We use research um, to 
examine what will um, help a student, specifically that particular student's schedule, his likes, dislikes, and a student will set up a weekly prioritized to-do list, whatever that looks like for that student. And each unit then gives a student an opportunity to reflect that on his or her progress and then target new goals. We use the student-led conferences to um, reflect on what we've accomplished and what um, goals we want to set for the next quarter. So if you look behind me, that's my goal getter boards. This is where students get to keep track of their own goals for my class and when they reach them. And these are erased every marking period and they get to be used individually by each student. So each class gets one, each student gets a line. And students just get to reflect where they are on their goals right now. The SMART goals that we have created for the unit, what we want to reach by the end of the unit, and how they're going to get there. Students reflect a lot of the time by using the rubrics for the project or assignment that they're working on. They grade themselves. They have a peer grade them, they get to reflect on where they are currently, they have one-on-one -on -one meetings with me, and we reflect on where they are and how we can move forward. And so those are just two simple ways of how we do goal setting and how we reflect in the class.